Hello, welcome back. This is Jennifer, and today I have probably the longest regular video I've ever done. This is very long, but it has a lot of different projects, so feel free to skip ahead to different projects if you want to. Now, I had that shoulder surgery, I've mentioned it before, and I found the thing that's easiest for me to do is die cutting because I can use an electric machine, and then assembling die cuts because I can rest my arm on my desk as I assemble them. So I spent several days, just a little bit each day, putting together the projects you see today. Not really a technique that I'm sharing, just some fun things that I made with some fun dies that I've been wanting to use. There are projects in here that pop up when you take them out of the envelope. There are three-dimensional stars, so much more, all packed into one video. This was just kind of me getting back into crafting, and I thought I'd share it with you. Let's start with this pop-up penguin. He's nice and flat when you have him in an envelope, but as soon as you take him out, he pops up for this fun dimension that will stand up nicely on display. Now, the same dies that I use to create this, I will use to create little baskets, little cups, and other pop-up features. So I'm gonna really stretch this die set out. But this is the one I'll start with. Now the die set that I used from this is from Scrappy Tales. It's called the A7 Pumpkin Pop-Up Die. However, I'm not creating pumpkins today. I'm using different other die sets, add-on die sets and more, to give it different looks. Now that big die up on the top right is the basic foundation for this, and there are other dies that come with it, and you'll see those in action too. The little dies on the bottom there I don't actually use today, but you can use them to create little holes on this piece. You could put maybe a little um, uh, battery lit votive candle on the inside. Now the dies up here on the top also come in that same die set. This creates a little base or lid for it and little add-ons for a pop-up pumpkin. I only use that round one there in today's video, but do know there are so many different things that you can do with these dies. I encourage you to go over to Scrappy Tales and just look at their collection of all the different things that really brings these products to life. For example, this setup here can be used to cut little panels that add onto the side of it. I'm not using that today, but do know there are many things available. Okay, let's start by doing the pop-up base. Just an example of a pop-up base using this large die. Now I have cut it from white cardstock just so it's easier to see, and you'll actually need two of these pieces cut to create one pop-up. You can ignore that smaller die cut on my desk. We don't need that right now. We just need two large die cuts like this one. Now you see these little sharp nooks. I call these little nooks. Now the nooks need to be cut all the way to the score lines. Watch how I'm gonna cut all the way to the score line there and I just extend that little nook. The die manufacturing is restricted so it couldn't do that sharp little spot. So you just need to use your scissors to extend it a bit. So I'm just gonna cut all the way in and make those little nooks all the way into those score lines. It's really easy to do and it doesn't have to be perfect. I will do this to both of my pieces. Again, you need two die cuts to create one pop-up base. The other thing you need to do to these two large die cuts if you want to do the pop-up feature is to cut these little triangle flaps off. See that little triangle there? I'm just cutting along a score line that the die creates and cutting the triangle off on all four places here. So there's three done and then I'll cut the fourth off here too. And I'll do that on two die cuts. So this is how you go about creating the pop-up base. Okay, so next I just like to fold in along all of the score lines. I fold them all in in the same way. You could actually do this folding as you go, but I think it's easier to do right at the beginning. And I will do this to both of the pieces, so these are both exactly the same. We will now glue these two pieces together to create that 3D pop-up shape. Now you want to use a strong adhesive here. You could use double-sided tape, like a quarter-inch double-sided tape like I have here, or you could use liquid adhesive. You'll see me use both throughout this video. Let's put adhesive on one of these larger flaps. Notice there is a slit down the center of it. Don't put adhesive over that, just put adhesive around it. So I put a strip of double-sided tape above it and below it and trim off any of the excess. Now that little slit is between those two pieces of tape. I'll remove the release paper and then I'll actually put some liquid adhesive on this too, some Gina K Connect, because between the two adhesives, I know it will hold. So I'm putting a little adhesive right on top of the double-sided tape. I'll take the other piece and I will match it up with the same flap. 
So I'll just put them right up against each other, lining up the edges and pressing firmly. Now our two pieces are connected. This may look like a lot with the little legs and arms sticking out, but don't worry, it really comes together very easily. Once you've done it once while watching, it's easy to do over and over again. Next, we're going to add a rubber band. Scrappy Tails sells the right rubber bands, the right size rubber bands, but you can try what you have. This rubber band is what will cause it to pop up when you take it out of the envelope. Now remember that little slit that was on that flap that we just glued together? We're gonna tuck the rubber band into that slit. And I'm just gonna just tuck it in as far as it will go. The rubber band will basically be coming out of the middle of that flap and it'll just be hanging there. Looks a little silly, but it'll all come together quickly. And you know in my videos, I try to do techniques that you can do with a variety of products. But once in a while, a die set or stamp set comes out that I think is brilliant and well-designed, and I think this is one of them. This would be really hard to create on my own, so I appreciate the dies that make it possible. And because I'm using a specific die set, I'll make sure to share a lot of ways to use it today. Okay, now on the other flap, we have another flap on the other end. I'm putting the double-sided tape around the slit, same as before, and some liquid adhesive. And then I'll just wrap this around to meet the other flap on the other end. So now we have this kind of closed into like a cylinder and that rubber band is on the inside. Because I'm using liquid glue, I'm gonna press this down and give it a few minutes to dry. If you don't wanna wait for it to dry, definitely use a strong double-sided tape again instead. Okay, so now that that is dry, I need to connect the other side of that rubber band onto the other slit that we just glued together. So I'm just going to tuck it into the slit that's on those flaps, press it down as far as it'll go, and now that rubber band is kind of suspended between those two flaps inside of this. It looks a little silly right now, but I promise it'll work in a moment. You can see how that rubber band is between the two slits on those flaps that stick on the inside. We just need to get these arms to come in and connect. I do so by putting adhesive on the little flap on the end of one of the arms and have it reach over and grab hands with the flap on the arm next to it. You can see how the flaps point in. I use liquid adhesive that time and then reverse tweezers that will hold it shut while it dries. However, if you don't wanna take the time for each of these to dry as you go, you can also use double-sided tape. So one faster way to do this would be to put a little piece of double-sided tape on all of those little flaps that are sticking out, those little flaps that look like hands. You just put adhesive on those, on each of them, and then you just reach it over and connect it with the flap nearest it. And this will end up forming that kind of, I don't know what to call it, a vase shape in the end. So this time I'm using that double-sided adhesive. I don't have to wait for that to dry. However, I really think that my liquid adhesive is stronger. So I encourage you to try what you have and see which works better for you when putting something together like this. You just wanna make sure that it stays secure. Okay, so I have the arms connected on the bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing with the arms on the top. Just put adhesive on the little flaps and then reach that over and connect with the little flap next to it, kind of like they're holding hands. And this will close it up to form that vase shape. Now, I mentioned before that this pop-up die can be used to make this pop-up shape, or you can have it in a formed shape that doesn't flatten, and it can be like a vase to put flowers in or to put little treats in. That's a different method of putting the same die together, and I'll show you that in a little bit. This is the method you do to create that fun pop-up. Okay, we just have this last pair of arms to put together and we have our shape. Now the cool thing about this is it flattens to go into an envelope. Depending on how much you add on it, you might need to use a five by seven envelope or something bigger than an A2 envelope. It really just depends and I'll show you a little bit of that later on. Okay, so here we have our basic pop-up and see how it flattens, watch, it just flattens down and can go into an envelope and then when you let go, that rubber band tightens and it pops to that full shape. And this is just really fun. Again, it was meant to create a pop-up uh, pumpkin. There's like a lid and a little stem you can put on the top, but I'm using it with other dies today for holiday shapes instead, some Christmas holiday shapes instead. Okay, so that's the basic way to assemble the pop-up. Let's create that little penguin pop-up that I showed you before. In this case, I'll create the base just like I did, but using black cardstock. And then I will use some add-on dies. Now this add-on die set is from Scrappy Tails. It's the pump, uh, Penguin and Polar Bear add-on die set. So using this, you can create a polar bear. 
or a penguin, and I'll do both. You could also use any other maybe critter dies that you may have to make this pop-up shape whatever you want it to be. You could even just glue a tree die cut on the front and it would be a tree that pops up. All right, so I did a bunch of die cutting off screen. This is something I can easily do with my left hand, and now I'm just gluing the pieces together. When I use die cuts, I like to stack them two or three thick to make them nice and strong and add that dimension, but you definitely could do one layer if you prefer. Now, if you struggle with assembling die sets like this and figuring out what goes where, always check the manufacturer's website. They have examples. I know Scrappy Tales has example videos and example cards, so you can see different ways to put them together. I'm changing things up on mine from how they really intended these add-on dies to be. I'm actually assembling the face of the penguin on a circle, and then I'm gluing that circle on the front of that pop-up. So I have black circles here that I die cut and I'm assembling the face of the penguin onto it. So this is the little face. I have a scarf. I have a hat. We'll add a little um, beak and some eyes. There are a lot of little dies in these sets so you can really add a lot of details. A lot of these dies have like eyebrows and little cheeks. So many different ways you can use them. And I know I use things a little different than how they intended, but that's the fun of crafting, just making it your own. To put the die cuts together, I'm using Gina K Connect liquid adhesive in a fine tip bottle. That's a really strong glue and a little goes a long way. And I have a crystal block that weighs a lot that I can put on my die cuts to hold them together as they dry. It's heavier than an acrylic block that we use to stamp with, and I find it very handy, but you could also use a heavy book. Also, when handling little die cuts like this, I like to use a pickup stick like the one in my hand. One end is a wax end that picks up the little die cuts and the other end is a pierce end that you can move them around. Okay, so now I have this little penguin done and I decided to change it up. I'm actually using a bigger beak. This is actually the polar bear's nose, but I thought the bigger one would be fun. So I cut the polar bear nose out of orange and I'm gonna glue it right on top of the smaller beak. I just changed my mind. Again, always try to change things up to make them your own. So you could put this little pumpkin head on a card and put a little sentiment underneath it. You could put it on a little wobbler and so it just wiggles, but I'm going to put him on one of these pop-up bases. So I cut the two die cuts from black cardstock and I went ahead and put double-sided tape on all the little flaps. Before when I showed you the example, I did it as I went, but this might make a little more sense to put the tape on before you start to assemble. So I put the tape on and all the little pieces that are hanging off, I'm just trimming off with my scissors. I also already have cut into those nooks, so they have those sharp points inside of the nooks. Okay, so now I can start removing the release paper and putting the flaps together. I'll start with two of the bigger flaps that have the slits on them, and I'll put them right up against each other. Then we can add our little rubber band into the slit on this double flap here. And again, the slit goes about halfway, so you just want to push it all the way in so it's tucked all the way in there. Don't worry, it won't fall out. Now you can take the other two big flaps and wrap those around and connect them together. And this will form the like walls of our vase, at least the sides or center walls of the vase. It's kind of hard to describe, but I promise as you're putting it together, it really does make sense. All right, now that we have these connected, we can take the other end of the rubber band and put it through that slit that is on this flap on the inside of our pop-up. Now it looks hard to see that little slit in there, but in real life, it's pretty easy to see and you just tuck it in there. And you'll see that that rubber band is stretched across in the inside, which is what causes that pop-up. Okay, now we can remove the release paper from two of the little hands that are on those arms and connect them together. So you're just taking the two arms that are closest together, putting those hands together, and you can see that the hands kind of point in towards the inside of the vase. And we'll do that with all the other pairs of arms. So this will give us a black pop-up base and that little penguin that we created, the penguin head, that's really just a black circle die cut with everything glued on it we'll be able to glue on the front of this pop-up vase. And it's something fun to put in the mail. You could also create a series of these to put on display. 
My second oldest daughter is a kindergarten teacher out in Oregon, and I'm thinking about making like 12 different critters using these pop-up bases and different um, add-ons. So we can do a polar bear, a nutcracker, a penguin, an elf, a Santa, all the different options that Scrappy Tails has. And I'll put them in the mail. So every day for 12 days, she gets a different one and she can put them on the desk in her classroom. And I think the kids would have a ball with it. Okay, so now I have my little penguin that's on the circle, and I have a joy sentiment. This one is from Memory Box. It's called Brilliant Joy. There are two dies. You can see the two dies there on the screen. I did the base from white, and then the letters joy from silver glitter, and glued those together. I'm going to glue that right on the bottom of our penguin head, right there on that little scarf, so that I can add this all together on the front of our pop-up base. I thought it'd be fun to have the joy there on the bottom. You could also have it sticking out the top or kind of sticking out the side, totally up to you. Now on the back of my pop-up, I want a place to write a little message. So I'm using these Spellbinders oval dies. I cut one from black and one from white, and I'm gluing that on the back side of the pop-up, and that's where I can write a little message. So let's start adding these pieces. On the front of the pop-up, I will add our little penguin, and on the back, we'll add the little oval. Now you could glue this to the front of a card so that when uh, the recipient pulls a card out of the envelope, the front pops up. You can put it on the inside, which you'll see me do in a moment. Many things that you can do. So there we have our little penguin pop-up. Now here I have them in a five by seven envelope. You could use a smaller envelope if you want. And as soon as you take them out, he pops up. I mean, that's huge pop-up dimension, which is really fun and something very unexpected. And honestly, you can see now why I wanted to do this. I was getting a little down by not being able to create. Creating is my therapy. And with my shoulder, I haven't been able to do a lot. So I figured I wanted to do something that was fun, that would bring me joy. And this really fit the bill. I just thought I'd videotape it and share it with you. Now his little penguin hat sticks a little too high. Otherwise, it could have fit into an A2 envelope. You could glue him lower if you want him to fit into an A2 envelope. I'll just use a five by seven. Five by seven uh, postage is the same as it would be in an A2 envelope. You could also cut the envelope down and reseal the side and have a smaller envelope, but that might require more, more postage. So it's better to go with the five by seven. And I'll link to my envelope sources below. So really on this pop-up base, you can glue anything on the front of it that you want to pop up. In this case, I have a little penguin and the word joy. Okay, let's do our next example. In this case, I am doing another pop-up, but I'm adhering it to the inside of a card so that when the recipient opens it, it pops out at them. And I'm using the polar bear dies from that same add-on that I used before, the penguin and polar bear add-on. Okay, so I have off-screen assembled the polar bear. I used the dies in the add-on set and added it all to a white circle die cut. You could do a bigger circle, a smaller circle, totally up to you or you could just glue all the die cuts onto the pop-up base. Now here you can see I used black gemstones for the eyes, which I think is really fun instead of little die cuts. I'll link to the ones I use below. Now for the card itself, I used the Poppy Stamp Scandinavian Snowflake Background Die. I cut it from white cardstock and I'm gluing it onto a piece of pink cardstock so that the pink shows through the openings. I will then glue all of that onto a white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. This is a top folding note card that's turned to its side. So really I'm keeping the front of this card very, very simple because all of the interest is on the inside. Now remember the white pop-up base that I made as an example earlier in this video? I'm gonna use that on the inside of the card. I'll go ahead and flatten it here. And on that center square there, I'll put some strong adhesive and add our polar bear head. You could add any die cuts that you want to on here. They will pop out at the recipient as soon as they open the card. Again, I'll put something heavy on it while it dries. So here you can see our little pop-up polar bear. I'll flip him over and on the back side, I'll put some strong liquid adhesive and then I'll glue him inside of my folded note card. And I'll put something heavy on that while that dries. So now you can see how it'll flatten nicely and you have your card. And as soon as the person opens up the card, it'll pop out. It'd be fun to use a little critter on that pop out with a little balloon in the hand to do a fun birthday card. But today is holiday, so I'm using the Concord and Ninth Holiday Sayings die set. In the set, there's the Very Merry and the Shadow die. 
And I use that for the simple sentiment on the front of our card. So here we have our card. It fits into an A2 envelope. And when you take it out, it's a simple card on the outside. Very, very simple. You could add some sparkle if you want to. But as soon as you open it up, it just pops out at you. And you've got this cute little polar bear. You can write a personal message on the left-hand side of the polar bear. And it's something that stands up very nicely on display too. So this is definitely something that's better than store-bought and really fun to make. And that's really what today's video was about for me. These first two examples show how to create that pop-up feature using this die set. And I plan to make more off screen, but now I wanted to show you how to use that pop-up die set to create something that stays three-dimensional. So you can put a gift inside of it or turn it into a basket or have a little lid on top. So this isn't something you would mail in an envelope, but rather something you would give or mail in a box. I plan to make these for teacher gifts and I got a good start on them today. So let's start by creating that base that stays three dimensional. So I'm using the same die as before and I'm cutting two just as we did before. And I'm cutting that little nook so it has a sharp point on the inside just as we did before. I will do this on all four nooks on both of the die cuts. Now last time we cut off those little triangle flaps inside of those nooks. This time, instead of cutting them off, we're gonna fold them in. We wanna keep those attached. So if you intend to use this die set to create a dimensional shape that stays in dimension, it doesn't flatten, you want to keep those little triangles on. So I'm folding those all in using my bone folder to really reinforce those fold lines. I will do this with the two different pieces. Ignore that little die cut on the left. I'm not using that right now. I will then fold in on all of the other score lines and we'll have two pieces that look like this. So let's start gluing this together. The first thing I do is put glue on that little triangle flap. Remember earlier we cut this flap off? This time we're putting glue on it and then gluing the arm onto it. See, I'm pressing the arm right onto that triangle flap. And I'll do that on the other edge there too. This is going to make sure that this vase shape stays solid so you can put little gifts in it or whatever you want to do with it. Earlier we cut it off because we wanted it to be able to flatten. Now I'm using liquid adhesive here just because I feel better about it, but use whatever you prefer. Now I did that on the two flaps on the other side. Now I'll do this on the two triangle flaps on this side. Now remember we have two pieces like this and I'll do the exact same thing on the other piece. I'll glue these triangle flaps down. I may be hungry, but I call this a little taco. So we'll create a second taco from a second die cut and we need to glue them together to form that base. So we have those larger flaps and the two little smaller flaps next to it. I'll put liquid adhesive on all of these flaps. You can see that little slit is on that bigger flap, but this time we're not using a rubber band because we're not doing a pop-up. So I'm just lining up these flaps together between the two pieces. Now, the reason I use liquid adhesive, again, is because it's what I trust. And I know I can hold it there for a few minutes and it'll stay strong. But use whatever you have in your stash that you trust. I attach the two bigger flaps together and then those smaller flaps on the side, I'll press those together and it starts to curl those two tacos into each other. Now my glue started to dry on those little flaps, so I'm adding a little bit more. So we'll squeeze those together. You can see the tacos start folding in on each other. Hold those there. And then all we have to do is glue those last flaps together and we'll have a solid base. Actually, it'll be solid on the sides. We'll still need to add a bottom to it later. And remember, if you don't wanna sit there and hold it with your fingers, you can always use those reverse tweezers that clamp. And I'll link to a few sources below. Now we have a vase shape that doesn't flatten. So this is not gonna flatten like the one before because we glued all those flaps down. We just need to add a base to this and a top if we want to. To create the base, we just need this die that also comes with that die set. And we're gonna fold across each of the score lines. So it has all these little flaps sticking out the side. We'll put some strong adhesive on each of those flaps, again, liquid adhesive or double-sided tape, and this will get pressed into the bottom of our open vase. 
So there are a few ways to do this. I like to put the adhesive on it and then just kind of pop it into the opening. And then once it's popped in there, I'll flip it over and then press each of those flaps with the adhesive up against the walls of the vase using a bone folder. I'll show you a different way to do that later using double-sided tape. But now we have a vase with a closed bottom. Now from this, we can do several things. And I'm gonna show you a few different examples. All of them have a little reindeer theme to them. I'm using the Scrappy Tails Reindeer Add-on Die Set. What's cool about this die set is there's a lot included in it, so you can create different style reindeer. So you'll see I have three different styles that I get out of this die set. So on one of them, I have the little um, Christmas lights through his antlers, which you could use those Christmas lights on something else. And then I put black gems for the eyes and little eyebrows on top, which I ended up skipping. Then for another, I put a little Santa hat in the antlers. And then for the third one, it's just a different style, but again, using the same die set. And on this one, I actually used the hat from the penguin and polar bear die set from before. So don't be afraid to combine your different die sets together to get different looks. So off screen, I created three reindeer, all on die cut circles, and we can add these to three different dimensional projects. So let me show you three different options. Now in this one, I made the walls of my vase from craft cardstock and the base from white. So this time I used double-sided tape on these little flaps and I'm popping that into my uh, vase, kind of going from the top and pushing it down. I showed earlier going from the bottom and kind of pushing it in, really doesn't matter as long as you get those flaps against the walls of your vase. And this will create a solid vase that you can add little treats or gifts to. You can really glue anything you want on the front of it. I'll glue one of the reindeer on the front of this. Then I'll create another of these pop-up vases and put one of the other reindeers on it. It's really fun that you have this dimensional piece that you can add anything to. Now this one here, I like him with the little hat on him. This one I decided will be good for a gift card. Now I do plan to get some tissue paper that will match, wrap the gift card in the tissue paper and tuck it inside, but I didn't have it for today's video. I did add a warm wishes die cut sentiment below that little deer face and I'll link to that below. But you can see how the gift card fits in there nicely and this would be a great thing to do for a teacher, for a friend. It just makes that gift card a little more special because you made something to go around it, to display it, to gift it in. And they can keep that and put it on display for the holidays. It's just something fun and different to do. Now with the other little reindeer base that we created, I took a pipe cleaner. I got this from Lila's Craft Stash. I glued the two ends to the flaps inside of the vase, and then I filled it with candy. And this is a fun little treat that you could give to teachers, nurses, doctors, anyone, because the outside is something special that you handmade, or you can put something else inside, like a little gift. For the third reindeer, I've created a base like I did for the others, but I'm also going to create a topper, like a lid for it, so you can put something inside and tie it closed. To create that lid, you need that circle die cut there that you see on the left with the little flaps. It's the same one used for the base, but we can use it for the lid also. I also have the die at the top of the screen. I'm finally going to use that die. I call this a lid wrap die. You actually take the flaps on the circle and wrap that lid wrap die cut around it. See how I'm pressing it against those three flaps. Now you'll need another die cut with that lid wrap die and it'll get attached to the other three flaps on that circle die cut. And once I have this lid formed, it'll sit right on top of our little vase. You can put ribbon around it to tie it closed if you want to, but I like to just set it on there. Okay, so you can see I'm pressing this piece onto those three remaining flaps. And then we just have those two little hands on each side that we need to glue together just to seal it shut. So now this will create a lid for our little reindeer vase. I think this just shows you why I was having so much fun with this die set because of the different ways to use it. You know, if you're gonna invest in a die set to do like something special like this, you wanna be able to use it in many ways. So we've got the pop-up, we got the little vase, we got the basket, we got this container with the lid, lots of different things you can do.
And for sentiment on this one, I used the Waffle Flower Holiday Cheers Sentiment Stamp Set and the Coordinating Die. I stamped the greeting on white cardstock and used the die to cut it out, and I added it right below our little reindeer. Now you could also, again, add a ribbon or twine around this to tie that lid on, but I'm just leaving it resting there. I plan to give this uh, for Christmas to a friend who is new to card making, and I included a little heart uh, envelope necklace. I saw this and I thought it was super cute, a great little gift, and it fits inside there perfectly. So really any small gift will fit in there nicely, and you can add anything you want to the little uh, container that we've created. Okay, so now that we've done these dimensional pieces where we did the pop-up and then these little containers, I thought I'd use some of the add-ons that are meant to go with these little pop-up creations, but use it for something else. I'm gonna actually use them for creating some tags. I always like to have a bunch of holiday tags available that I can add to presents when the season comes, and these are really cute. I use the Scrappy Tails Nutcracker add-on dies. So these dies are really meant to make a nutcracker out of the pop-up uh, features that I showed you earlier, but I'm gonna use them instead on a tag. So I actually created a folded tag. You can see it's a very narrow strip of folded cardstock, and I did that from different skin tone colors. Onto that folded piece of cardstock, I am adding all of the little nutcracker pieces. These are so much fun to put together. I always enjoy any dies that require a little assembly because you can add as much to them as you want or as simple as you want. So off screen, I created three tags like this, all of them on that folded piece of narrow cardstock so that you can open it up and write to and from on it, or you could just write it on the back. And all of these die cut pieces are from that Nutcracker add-on set. I just added it onto the folded tag. Now I want to be able to tie these onto a present, so I am using my hole punch here to punch a little hole at the top, and then I will tie some baker's twine through it. Uh, by the way, I was looking for lots of different colors of baker twine. I found a great option for it where you have all kinds of color options for a pretty good price, and I'll put a link to that below always good for adding to a card or simply adding on the top, top of a tag. So here's a look at my three final little nutcracker tags. You can see all the little layered die cuts and I also added some gold, matte, and silver glitter cardstock to these for a bit of sparkle. I did the eyes different on each which just shows you how you can change things up. On this one I use small little black gems, on this one I use bigger back black gems, and on the red hat, hat not, uh, nutcracker I used the little uh, die cuts for the eyes that come with the set. So again, this is the add-on set meant to go with that pop-up feature I showed you before, but I just changed things up and used them on tags. You could also use these nutcracker die cuts on a circle die cut and then just add it to a card as your main element. So just really trying to find ways to stretch my products and use them creatively. So for today, that's all I have using that pop-up die set and the add-ons, but I plan to do more in the future. And reminder to go look at the Scrappy Tales website. She does a lot of examples of the different ways you can use the dies. For example, here are the Nutcracker dies on the pop-up base. I also just wanted to show you this cute little one. Sabrina sent this to me. She owns Scrappy Tails. She's super sweet. And she created this little pumpkin using that pop-up base. She left the bottom off of it so she could put in a little battery-operated votive. And then there's a little lid, and she made it look like a pumpkin. So there's lots of Halloween-themed add-ons, too. And this one was created just using that basic pop-up die set. Next up, I thought I'd share with you some snowflakes that Lila and I made together. These we plan to uh, add to our garland on our fireplace, so we're going to end up doing a whole rainbow of different snowflakes. Now, the cool thing about these is you just use cardstock you have, and then the dies to create them are small, so the price point is pretty good on these considering how big the final result is. So there are actually two different dies to create two different snowflakes, and then I'll show you how to combine them. Let's start with the first die. I think this one's the, probably the simpler of the two. It's called the 3D Pointy Snowflake Die from Scrappy Tails. So that die there is the only thing you need to create this large snowflake. You'll need to cut multiple die cuts, and it's up to you. You can do anywhere from six to maybe 10 die cuts per snowflake, and I'll show you a variety of options. 
The die does also create score lines, one down the center, and then there are three along these cutouts here, and then three along the cutouts at the top. I created a few die cuts that are from a lighter red and a few from a darker red and I'll mix them up on the one snowflake. I first like to fold along that middle score line on each of them. Now you don't have to do this, you could skip this step actually, but I did find that it helped it kind of come together a bit easier. So I'm just folding along it and using a bone folder to reinforce it. But honestly, as I got going on these, I just did a bunch of die cut pieces, went to my sofa and did all of the folding and gluing. So I ended up skipping the bone folder. You can just use your fingers to press it down. Now we need to do an accordion fold along the three score lines on this one side that are in these little cutouts. I'm gonna start with the middle of those three score lines. It goes right through the middle of those cutouts. And I'm folding along the middle score line towards myself. So you can see I'm folding it up towards myself. And I'm gonna make sure the point, uh, points up there on the top line up, and then the points at the bottom will line up. Then I can just press that fold down. And you can use a bone folder, but again, I would just use your fingers. So we've folded towards ourselves along the middle score line on the cutouts over here. Now remember there are three little score lines there. So there's one to the left and the right of the one that we just folded, very close to it. We're gonna fold back along those two score lines. So here I'm folding back along the first one and I'll press it down. And then I will fold back along to the other score line. You'll see me kind of fold it here with my fingers. I just kind of press it forward. And now what we have is kind of like an M. It looks like an M from the side. Basically that cutout area has that dimension to it now. So now let's do the same thing on the other side of the die cut along that row of cutouts. I'm folding towards myself on the center score line. So now when I fold this over, those points will add, line up there at the top and at the bottom. That way you know you have it folded just right even though there are score lines embossed on it. After I have the center line folded, I will fold back along the two score lines to the left and the right of that center fold line. And that will again create that little groove or that little bump right there in the cutout area. So both sides of this die cut will be exactly the same. Next, we just need to fold the two sides in. So this, the flap on the left and the flap on the right, I'm gonna fold back and you can see how we have that dimension to it thanks to those little fold lines that we've done. And now we just need to glue these two flaps together. I like to use liquid adhesive for this because I can wiggle it to line it up just right. I'm putting liquid adhesive along one flap towards the point on one end and towards the point on the other end. Just make sure you use a strong glue here. Then take the other flap and line it up and you'll see the points at the top and the bottom will line up. You can either hold this with your fingers for a few moments, you can put reverse tweezers to pinch it here, or just put something heavy on it while it dries, which is what I usually choose to do. Now I will do the same thing with all of the die cuts. Again, you need like six to 10 of them. I usually do six or eight. I did use a lighter 80 pound cardstock for this one, but you can also use a heavier weight cardstock and you don't need as many die cuts. You could use just six for that, but you can experiment with what you have. So I'm repeating the same process here. You'll see as you make a couple of these that you get really quick at making each one so that you can end up making one of these snowflakes in about 15 to 20 minutes. And it really is worth that time. I made my snowflakes today pretty monochromatic, pretty simple, but you could use pattern papers for this. You could use specialty card stocks for this. You can get really creative. You could even do a rainbow snowflake by making each of these die cuts a different color. I continue to fold and glue all of the die cuts. I think I have six here, a couple are off screen. And now we need to fold these folded pieces in half. Remember we had that score line there down the center? We're gonna fold along that. And this will create the point, or force the points there to line up on the end. And so you have this folded part of your snowflake. Now I folded so that that crease that you see there is on the inside and it's smooth on the outside. See that crease is on the inside there. Now we need to glue this folded. So I just like to put some strong glue there up at the point and then close the points onto each other. And you can, again, pinch this with your fingers, put something heavy on it, or use reverse tweezers to hold it as it dries. If you prefer, you can use like a double-sided tape that's strong and it'll dry right away. 
Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing with all of the die cuts. So you end up with these funny looking folded pieces that kind of look like a house with a roof. You can see how a lighter weight cardstock would be easier to fold here, but I did make one of these with heavier weight cardstock and I had no problem at all. Okay, so now I have six of these die cuts folded and glued. You can do more if you want to. You could do seven, eight, nine, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna glue these back to back now and I'll alternate between light red and dark red. So on the side of one of these, towards that point at the top, I'll put some strong glue. Then I'll take the next one and just put it right up against it so the points line up. And you can see how I'm starting to form the snowflake from the side. Now you can glue the next one right onto this, but instead I like to set that pair aside and let it dry and create another pair. So here I'm taking a light and a dark, gluing those back to back. And then I'll do the same thing with the other two left over. So again, you could just glue them all connected at once, but I just like to give it some time to dry. So now I have these pairs glued together and we just need to glue them back to back. So I'll put glue on the side of one of the pairs and glue it up against the next pair. And look at that, you can see how pretty this is already forming. Now, I thought I was gonna use only six of these folded die cuts. I did change my mind and I did two more. So this one will actually have eight. It just makes it more full. It's totally up to you how many you use and something that you'll want to experiment based on the cardstock you have. So I'll add this last pair onto it. So now I have eight of those folded die cuts glued together back to back. And I'm gonna give that some time to dry. I want it to be completely dry before I do anything else. Once it's dry, we can take the two ends and glue them together. So put glue on one tip and just fold it over to the last one and it stretches those out and really creates this fun shape. And this one, you wanna make sure you hold well with your fingers or with your reverse tweezers. And look at that fun dimensional snowflake. It is big and it is thick and great for display. Now this red one I made with eight folded die cuts. The blue one there I did with six folded die cuts. So you can see how it's a little bit different and it just gives you more options for using this die. Now you can add things to this. You could add little die cuts, maybe some snowflakes or stars. I added gems to both of these, silver on the blue one and some red sparkly ones on the red one. So you can see how you can create this large snowflake using that one small die. Now let's create the other style of snowflake. This one uses a different die. Again, it has a great price point because it's pretty small. And this is the fluffy snowflake die. I will say the last die is a tiny bit easier to assemble, but once you've used this one a few times, I didn't have any problems. Once again, I die cut about six to eight of these, and I'm not sure how many I'll use quite yet. Really, the uh, number is up to you. This, this die again creates those score lines. So I like to do that first fold down the center. It just makes it easier to fold later on. And you can see I did two shades of blue cardstock this time. Now let's create the dimension. Along the first score line on this side, I'm folding backwards. Then the next score line, I'm folding forwards. And the score line after that, I'm folding backwards. So we end up having that dimension to this, kind of like the dimension we had on the last one, but no cutouts in the center. Very easy to do that side. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side now, but the cutouts are there, so it makes it a little bit trickier, but not too bad. There are three score lines very close together. The first one closest to the edge, I'm folding back first. Now that next score line there in the middle, I'm gonna fold towards me, and I like to use my thumbnail to kind of help the fold start. I find that the easiest way to do it. So you can see how I'm kind of folding it around my thumbnail. Then I'll flatten that. Now we have one more score line and I'm gonna fold back. So we're doing a little accordion fold here. Each time I fold, I'm going a different direction. And you can see how I just kind of pinch this to fold there along that score line. So there we have this funny looking piece. It actually looks kind of like the fold lines are like our last snowflake. The shape is just a little bit different. So again, we need to glue the end flaps together. Now what I like to do is put glue along the flap that has the cutouts in it. I'll put some of my strong adhesive right along that edge there. And then I like to fold the other one over onto it and then press everything down on my desk. At this point, I usually put something heavy on it or you could just hold it there for a few moments. I'll do one more just so you can see the process again. 
Now, some other ideas that you can do with this is you could make half of a snowflake and glue it like a, a semicircle snowflake onto a package for a really cool dimensional bow. There are a lot of things you can do with this. You could also stamp on these little die cuts before you score and fold and glue them together. And once you have a bunch of them, you can put them on garland, you can string them onto a garland, you can create them as little individual ornaments for a tree or to hang on a package. I plan to make a bunch and put them on a wreath. I thought that would be fun too. So the whole wreath is made from a bunch of these snowflakes overlapping. Okay, so once it's dried, this is what one of the snowflake pieces looks like. And I created six to eight of these. Now we need to fold them in half, just like we did on our last snowflake. And I like to fold in on that side that we glued together. And you can see all the points will match up and I just press it with my fingers. Then we can put glue on the inside. I like to put glue along that edge there. And this one, you definitely wanna make sure you hold it together while it dries, putting something, he something heavy on it. And you'll do that same fold for all of the pieces. Now we can start gluing them together back to back. So I have a light blue one here. I'll put glue on the side and put a dark blue one so the sides match up and press it together. And I'll do that with the other pairs that I have here. Again, you just could connect them all at first, but I like to do the pairs and then connect the pairs together. It just gives my glue some more time to dry and it doesn't like move on me as I put them together. So here you can see I have three pairs of these little snowflake folded die cut pieces glued together. Now we can put those together. I put glue on the side, match it up against the side of the other pair, and then add this one on the side of that. And you can see how they, look at how they all line up. You can squish it all together and hold it there for a few moments. Once you are certain that is completely dry, you wanna give that some time to dry, you're gonna put glue on those final flaps there and stretch them around to meet. You wanna hold that there with your fingers for a bit or use some reverse tweezers. And believe it or not, I only used six of those snowflake folded die cuts and it formed this great snowflake with no problem. And if you're using strong glue, you don't have to worry about stretching it, it'll still hold tight. So here are two I made with this die. The one on the left uses six snowflake die cuts. The one on the right uses eight, so you can see how it's fuller. So you can simply change the look of it depending on how many uh, die cuts you glue together. Now you know me, I like to get more value out of my dies by using them creatively. So I thought I'd use both of these snowflake dies on one snowflake to see if I could create something unique. So I'm using both the pointy snowflake die and the fluffy snowflake die. Off screen, I created the little snowflake elements just like I showed you using both dies. And I'm lining them up on the top of the screen, alternating between the two shapes between the shapes that the pointy die creates and the shapes that the fluffy die creates. You can see them all lined up there. Now I'm gonna start gluing them together back to back. But remember they're different shapes, so we gotta get a little creative here. I chose to line up the top row of cutouts on the one piece with the top row of cutouts on the other piece. So I'm gonna put some glue between them. See that row of cutouts there? I'm gonna line that up with the row of cutouts on the other. It really doesn't matter how you line them up, just as long as you do the same with each one you glue together. So I'm gonna line up those cutouts up there. You'll notice that the folded line at the base doesn't line up, it doesn't meet up in the bottom, but that's okay. It's gonna create a unique looking snowflake. So I'm gonna pinch that together and hold it there and give it a few moments to dry. Let's go ahead and create another pair. So I'll grab the next two on my line up there at the top and I'll glue these together in the same way putting them under my heavy block so that it dries in place. And I'll continue to do this to create the pairs going in order along the top of the screen there. Once all of my pairs are created, we can glue them together. So we'll go back to back, gluing together the same way we did before, lining up in the same way and putting the glue in the same spot. So you can see how we're starting to form this unique snowflake. Now this one where I combine the two dies together is definitely more advanced than the other two. But once you get the hang of the other two, this one's not hard to do at all. And it allows you to create a third looking snowflake that you can add to your garland or wreath. I'll now glue these pieces together, back to back in the same way as we've been doing. I like to squish it down like this and you can see how they're all lined up, glued together. And then we can add that final one. And once that final one is added and pressed together well, I'm gonna set that aside to dry for a while. 
Once I'm sure it's dry, we can put adhesive on the end flap here and then stretch it around to meet the other end flap. And we end up with this really unique looking snowflake that's the combination of the two dies I already showed you. Great way to stretch your supplies and get more out of these specialty dies. I do plan to go back and add some things to these. You could spray them with some gold glitter dust or silver glitter dust. You can do a lot to them. I'm keeping them kind of simple right now because I plan to use fishing line to wrap it around our garland come Christmas time. So I'm going to wait and see what I want to add to it. So just to review the pointy snowflake die on the left, it was used to create the blue snowflake. Now the fluffy snowflake die on the right was used to create that teal colored snowflake. Then I used the two dies together to create this pink one that I'm showing in the middle. I just thought these were really fun to put together and something that it would be fun to share with you. But keep in mind, Scrappy Tail actually has more dies that create things like this, like a dimensional North Star, an angel that has dimension. So if you like this kind of thing too, I encourage you to check that out. I will have links below. I hope you enjoyed these uh, dimensional projects that I created with these specialty dies and the additional ways to stretch them and get more value from them. And the best part is these dies can be used in so many more ways than I use them. Just ran out of time to share today. At the end, I'll link to a couple other dimensional project videos that are worth checking out. I thank you for spending this time with me. It's a long video. I appreciate it. And I'll see you soon.